ओके अस्सलाम वालेकुम लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ एनीमिया एंड ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट क्लिनिकल एस्पेक्ट्स रिलेटेड टू द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ एनीमिया वी ऑल नो दैट दिस कंडीशन इज ऑलमोस्ट ऑलवेज देयर व्हेन यू आर डीलिंग विद पेशेंट्स सफरिंग फ्रॉम एंड ऑर्गन डैमेज इदर दे आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम क्रॉनिक लिवर डिजीज क्रॉनिक किडनी डिजीज और क्रॉनिक heart failure or copd and many persons coming to you starting from the children's to old age this may look like a little derangement but this can save a lot of effort by physician and also it can detect earlier most of the sinister pathologies and the most important one is called rectal carcinoma and they say uh, anemia in male patients is never a normal finding until you have a solid reason to explain the reason for anemia and uh, first we will talk about the general uh, things about the anemia what is the definition of anemia what are the types of anemia and what is the importance of knowing all this knowledge and then we will talk specifically about the management of iron deficiency anemia as we know that all over the world the most common etiology of anemia is iron deficiency anemia and either they are the adolescent children or young female they are uh, suffering from anemia and due to anemia there are uh, grave consequences like delayed growth growth retardation and mental incapacitation and then not achieving the good height and many other things and many manifestation leading to the reduced quality of life so that's why knowing each and every detail about the management of anemia is so important that you can make a lot of difference even while working in periphery setting while working in a tertiary care hospital and this topic ranges from a simple just one drug leading to a good response till doing every investigation not finding the cause and not making any difference and you are not often able to even pick what is causing the anemia so remember anemia is not a diagnosis it is often the manifestation and the way we define anemia is by looking at hemoglobin most of the time we will discuss about the other ways to de- define anemia so first let's now talk in detail why it is important to know by heart this disease i already have talked about that uh, anemia is so prevalent and uh, every gender every race and uh, many of the patients suffering from many other diseases they also have anemia at the same time sometimes anemia may not be the sole reason for coming to you or sometime it is it may be the primary reason for consulting a doctor uh, it depends it depends upon the setting where you are facing the patient or for example while working in a periphery setting like in vhu or dhq thq females or children will come to you by complaining that i am i often feel tired or i am not able to do my work that i was often that i was able to perform earlier and now i i am experiencing shortness of breath all those symptoms you just can explain them by uh, keeping in mind that uh, you don't have enough oxygen oxygen level to supply the power to every part of your organ starting from the brain till your legs like if you are not getting good oxygenation by the due to reduction of hemoglobin uh, then you will feel obstructed or confused or not able to think clearly then the same goes with your muscles that you feel tired myalgia as are there fatigue is there and then having the manifestation of anemia on heart is by shortness of breath and the same is that other parts of the body will experience the same manifestation so there is no fun in explaining what are the symptoms of anemia what we are trying to establish or make emphasis on is it is important to make sure that you find the cause of anemia and what is causing the anemia so to know what is causing the anemia you have to think that anemia itself is not a disease it is often caused by many other underlying reasons so what i just have told that anemia is not a disease itself it's often a manifestation like uh, iron deficiency is leading to anemia or b12 or folic acid deficiency is leading to anemia and next thing how you define anemia it is simple reduction of hemoglobin less than the reference value when looking 
looking at the age gender and race specific values and the values uh, most often uh, people explain anemia is by hemoglobin levels and uh, hemoglobin most of the time is often referenced as 11 to 14 or 12 to 16 gram per deciliter or milligram per liter or like this remember there are some conditions in which you can see a little bit uh, over estimation of the hb values and under estimation of the hb values do read more about this and always think of uh, variation in normal physiological parameters uh, like when you are dehydrated you will uh, see the hb is little bit more than the actual value and when you are suffering from overload states like uh, when the female is pregnant in third trimester then you will see a dilutional anemia and that is actually not an anemia uh, remember this as well always classify anemia based upon the mcv because this one is the most important to tell you about the what next investigation can help you in making or reaching the diagnosis of the underlying cause of the anemia so uh, having a sound knowledge is often going to cut short your journey till you make the diagnosis it is indirect way of saying that you will decrease the suffering of the patient you will decrease the expenditures of the patient and this way you will make a big difference and the whatever classification you use the important thing when uh, using the severity classification is it can guide you about the management outside the hospital or inside the hospital and also the severity is somewhat associated with the usage of the appropriate agents like oral versus iron or you can say use of blood products and the most practical uh, way of classifying anemia is uh, based upon the mcv that is microcytic macrocytic and normocytic anemia and you know that uh, the three most important reasons for having microcytic anemia is iron deficiency thalassemia and anemia of chronic disease on which some books uh, do have some reservation that this may be a normocytic anemia but still remember iron deficiency anemia is the most commonest one that presents with low mcv and the low mcv by low mcv we can uh, say that it is often less than 72 femdoliter uh, there is a little bit variation uh, in different laboratory values but you can have an estimate that this is low mcv now the anemia in few population is never a normal finding i already have told that whenever you see anemia in patients of old age try hard to find the cause so anemia in a old male is never normal finding because it can be the onset of colorectal carcinoma or it can also never be a normal finding in post menopausal female there are other populations as well but still a general statement is that for example a young menstruating female with not having good enough nutrition can make sense but once you have everything uh, required for Uh, the production of uh, hemoglobin and still you are having anemia then this is not a normal thing but still don't take it uh, just a casual finding or don't ignore it on a complete blood picture report try hard try to have the surety that what is the reason of anemia throughout my uh, 10 to 11 years i have uh, seen that uh, you find this simple derangement in 60 to 70% patients once they are here in hospital and once they are in tertiary care hospitals they are having more chances of having at least anemia and the earlier you have more suspicion that there can be a sinister pathology the more good results you will achieve now coming to the management after talking about why it is important and how to make sure that Uh, what is the reason of anemia and the way of diagnosing anemia and general statements now thing is always look for underlying cause once there is anemia have look at mcv then try to make an estimate get some clues from the history get some clues from the other values for example on a complete blood cell report you are having pan cytopenia then the clue is that this patient may have Uh, hematological malignancy 
causing the underproduction or lack of production of uh, hemoglobin and uh, important thing is also that uh, once you have hematological malignancy the reason for anemia is it comes late it comes later than the deficiency of other uh, blood products for example platelets having less ha half life as compared to hemoglobin so now coming on to the next important thing is that rule out celiac and menorrhagia first and especially think of celiac disease as a cause of anemia once the patient is also having some history of diarrhea and uh, females often don't have good enough knowledge about what is actually the definition of menorrhagia so go in detail ask them about how many number of pads they use for their uh, men, uh, for their menstrual cycles and do refer them to gynecology and uh, gynecologist and let them have investigations about this and uh, the other causes of anemia are a chronic blood loss going on either by worm infestation that are sucking the blood or a person who is having melina cult blood that is not visible but still the bleed is going on or anyone who is suffering from peptic ulcer disease and the blood is oozing out and the chronic liver disease where still the cause of anemia here is also more loss and that the production is not able to meet that loss and one practical tip that is give them deworm therapy or you can say uh, give them vermox albendazole and mebendazole that is going to save a lot of time especially in children we have seen many patients coming with different complaints and but still we often find the worms moving inside the colon so here in our in countries like uh, pakistan bangladesh india the parasitic infections uh, are so prevalent that uh, giving a trial or empiric therapy of uh, parasitic deworm therapy is always going to help you once you think that is it, it is it is appropriate specifically talking in the context of iron deficiency anemia it is so important that don't discontinue therapy too early uh, let me give you an example and to explain it a little bit further that for example we as a person have some money in our pockets and uh, we also have some reserves in our banks we are technically not uh, short of money until we consume all the money present inside a bank so same is the story that once you have a anemia that is present so it means the iron stores are already depleted from the reticular endothelial system and all other storages are also gone so now you don't just have to correct the hb you also have to replace all the stores so it takes 3 to 6 months but people don't take therapy often that long and they discontinue in between make sure that either you first get the level of iron or order iron studies before starting therapy and then checking it again don't just discontinue therapy once you have normal hb so one important uh, mistake i also want to share during the whole course of the management of uh, anemia is that we often treat empirically without uh, proving the cause of anemia and that's often being mispracticed everywhere starting from the bottom to the very high special specialized hospitals so don't do this mistake whenever possible whenever possible and the circumstances allow you to make sure that you have all the required uh, tests so make sure that the cause of anemia is iron deficiency or folic acid deficiency or b12 deficiency because the once you are not having good responses or the hb is not increasing so believe me that you are in trouble because now if you send that laboratory tests the tests are not an actual reflection of your hb levels and especially once the patient have just gone through any blood transfusion then the also the blood picture become deranged 
and you don't get what is actually the reason of anemia and this becomes difficult to manage so remember before you transfuse blood take a sample for all the required tests and also make a habit that whenever the circumstances and the finances allow you to get the iron studies folic acid b12 whatever required by get by looking at the clues of the underlying cause so now choosing the appropriate therapy when managing the iron deficiency anemia is one of the key thing that an experienced clinician have mastered that you know that the patient is not going to take oral because of the reasons then you have to go with iv iron and once you know that there is no indication of iv do tell them that you have to take the oral therapy for longer time because of the reasons that it is easier to take it is uh, easier it is easier to take it is uh, uh, cheap and uh, having less side effects or you can say less serious side effects so the things that uh, stop a person from choosing oral therapy is often the females complain that after taking the oral pills i feel nauseous i feel nausea vomiting or having some gi side effects and this one thing limits a lot of uh, oral intake and uh, among the oral agents there are some uh, different forms of iron that have some advantages over another here i would like to make a point that uh, i have often seen that the females coming to us and asking for the veno for infusion that is one of the form of iv iron that i am here to uh, because i am here because my doctor advised me to get this uh, infusion and uh, they get one transfusion and then they forget and they think that the anemia is going to be all right this is not right because once you have selected the iv iron for the correction of your iron stores then you have to calculate the exact dose of iv iron required to fulfill all these depleted stores let's summarize anemia not responding to treat to treatment is often celiac disease by what is mean by this anemia not responding for example you uh, ordered a cbc test and uh, there was deficiency of hemoglobin and the mcb was low or uh, you came to a conclusion that the patient is also having diarrhea and you think that the uh, cause of anemia is celiac disease one way is to may uh, one way to reach to the diagnosis of celiac disease is this simple approach the other way around is once you treat are treating a patient with iron deficiency anemia but the patient in spite of having a appropriate dosage of iron still not having increased level of hb so this is what i want to say that once you have anemia and that is not responding think of celiac disease and the other way is or the other cause of a situation like this is infection by h pylori organism dietary modifications and lifestyle modifications are all that important because all those who cannot afford iron therapies they can improve a lot by just the modifications or you can say added benefits of modifications in diet and lifestyle are also going to make a big difference what are those dietary modification and that is increased intake of iron rich diets and the diets rich in iron you can find them on internet meat is one of the iron rich diet in which uh, that is readily absorbable other the vegetable sources of iron are not easily absorbable that's why having the eggs and uh, meat in the diet of a uh, children or the adolescent can make a lot of difference and then the other lifestyle modification that can help is not using too much herbal teas and uh, coffee or caffeine often obstructs the absorption of iron 
just a little bit information about the oral iron farms and the uh, practically available uh, agents in market or most famous ones are the spensule fifolvit the it it a, a little bit different form of a capsule in which you see some granules is spensule fifolvit is often present in uh, basic health units where people come and demand that we want that small capsule to increase their iron stores as advised by their gynecologist and uh, hybrid folic uh, the most uh, efficacious product regarding iron we also have seen our seniors using this and then the bisleri is a different form that is iron polymaltose complex so oral forms are different preparation for ferrous fumarate ferrous gluconate and ferrous sulfate but uh, the important thing is once the patient is having gi side effects then try to use iron polymaltose complex that is bisleri because it has less gi side effects as compared to other form ferrous or ferric and uh, they may have some relief of their gi side effects so once the patient uh, is on oral iron and taking it from a longer time but still the anemia is not improving or the improvement anemia improvement if of anemia is causing more troubles by side effects as compared to the improvements in daily life then think of something else or think think of some other therapies and that is the indication of iv iron now let's talk about the iv iron and that iv iron there are different forms of iv iron that important ones are the iron dextran iron sucrose and uh, these two are the most commonly used one but nowadays phenofer iron sucrose is the most frequently used one